Ah, you just okay. uh, just came up. This meeting is being recorded. Good, great. Okay, um, uh, now, yes, it says it's recording. So I'm going to start with my. Uh, this is Matthew Sims uh, interviewing Ed Burrell in Bellingham, Washington at his home on July 8th, 2020 for the Smithsonian Institution Archives of American Arts Pandemic Project, which is the kind of little name we gave. Hi, Barbara. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Good, yourself? <laughs> Good. Good. Well, uh, very nice to see you. <laughs> All right, Ed, you want to start over or you want to? No, I'm fine. Okay, excellent. Right. Um, it's delightful to see Barbara. Um, Ed, we just wanted to check in with you. I wanted to check in with you, see how you're doing, what's going on, you know? Well, what's going on is, particularly with me, is uh, uh, the, the beginning of summer 2020, uh, which is like uh, some new looks at racism, at sexism, at, at um, the terrifying image of the other, all of it's being raised to a higher visual level or to a higher profile as a result of a pandemic and the inequities and all that that are going on. And for me, okay, my way of addressing some of that it has to do with, okay, how do I look at that through the eyes of an artist? And there are things that the arts can do at a time like this that maybe other, um, other sectors can't do. And, and uh, it's, it's gonna have to do with, and it's gonna be some kind of involvement with the way we put our heads together. Uh, obviously, because of this pandemic, we're starting to look at things and we're going, whoa, a lot of this has been really badly conceived. And, and our biases and our, our, uh, our, um, uh, our well, our biases, our uh, um, critical issues are not necessarily um, addressing where the reality of what we are. The pandemic, I think, is giving us a lot of, okay, you guys, uh, you've had a chance to play around with your little systems and so forth. Oh, by the way, that doesn't mean shit to me because I'm going to bite you anyway and you're going to have to deal with me. You can't not do what you generally do, which is deny, 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 you get a problem, and if it's not a problem that you want to deal with because it's too revealing, you just deny it's there. Try that with me, says the pandemic, and you ain't going to make it. Okay, right out. What I'm thinking about, Matthew, has been something that uh, I was saying this morning that uh, my head has been available to my environment in this sense. I'm not in New York. I'm not in LA, uh, I have a, a certain amount of quiet, a certain amount of contemplative uh, opportunities and whether I'm going to contemplate or not, ideas are coming and they're hitting me in the head pretty hard. Um, and some of, that, some of those ideas. Well, here you go, because I'm trying to put together this new body of work I kind of have an idea of how I'm going to do it. The other big question is, what are you going to do? And how are you going to do that? Um, let, me, let me start in what looks like left field and try to bring it home. When you and I and every, uh, our other homo sapiens were born, we were born egocentric we were born narcissistic. Why? Because that's part of our protection mechanism. We had to be. We cry if we're hungry. We cry if our pants are full of poo-poo. We, um, we cry if we want to be held uh, and so forth. We are hollering out because at that point in time, 
we're the only thing in the universe and everyone's going to have to understand that at least that's our position and that's going to go on for a while until there's a point at which we discover that and belatedly for some there are other people in the universe uh, and we learn later that they were egocentric and narcissistic when they were born too and nature seems to be telling us yeah you could be that but at one point you gotta leave that and you gotta go from me to we you're gonna have to live cooperatively if you're going to live at all and on one level if you as a member of the species and other others like you if you don't learn how to live cooperatively that's your ass you're out of here man okay now i'm saying all that to say that there's a whole bunch of people who don't make the transition they're still into me 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 and oh by the way let's talk about me right uh, and there are models for that adolf hitler uh, joseph stalin uh, napoleon donald trump they're all into they didn't make the transition they're still seeing they're living in a box that is them and everything all kind of in, incoming information has to be filtered through me okay so it's a it's all masturbation all of it for them um unfortunately to say that is to say that and this is where my ideas start to really start to penetrate my what i've just said if indeed we are coming from that egocentric narcissistic center that means we are basically being motivated by our fears mm bottom line our fears and in fact for some our rage right. fear so terrifying that it it manifests itself in rage um what happens and what i'm thinking about is that uh racism sexism uh, fear of the other, fear of the immigrants, anything outside of that personality's way of seeing things, itself, himself, anything outside of that is a reason for terror, mm -hmm. absolute terror. Therefore, when we are dealing with racism, sexism, the fear of other, we're dealing with a veneer. Mm -hmm. that's the way that real basic deep terror manifests itself um yeah you could say i hate the blacks i hate the browns i hate the blah blah blah, blah. well yeah except that's not what on that's not what's underneath that what's mm -hmm. underneath that is you are terrified you are absolutely terrified and part of that terror is you don't know who you are uh -huh. you really don't so the other comes along and it's going to be threatening because it has no relationship to you not that anything does but you are you are going to manifest that terror which might manifest as self as hate which might manifest itself as greed which means if you've got 50 billion dollars i'm talking let's say to bill gates i go bill bill you really don't need all that money it is armor that's around some deep-seated insecurities fear i'm not sure it's rage in his case but it's certainly uh, that much money is how terrified you are mm. Mm. we can see donald trump do his number using racism sex whatever he's got to use to feed some kind of comfort that is only dealt with and it really can't ever be dealt with but 
temporarily gives a little solace to that ego, that, that, that uh, narcissistic place that says, well, we told them there and we won that one, except there's another one coming up and it's, and it's, it's, it's the Mexicans or it's women. I think the fear and the, and the terror that I'm talking about happens with people that you and I know. Mm. It happens on our level. Mm. I, I'm thoroughly convinced that deep down there are some men who are absolutely terrified of women. Mm. And mm -hmm. sexism is a comfortable veneer that lays over that. But your terror of women is a terror of the other. It just happens to be manifest in, in women. It could be anything. Mm. You follow where I'm going and what I'm, what I'm yeah. setting up? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think at one point, let's say you are, uh, well, Columbus, we kind of know. Columbus came over and he met a bunch of naked, beautiful brown people who came to him with hands open saying, hey, baby, come on in. This is really mellow. We got plenty to eat. We got plenty of uh, place for you to lay up. Uh, and if you dance at all, we got you covered, man. You can dance. You can celebrate being, okay, Columbus. All right? Columbus brought his, that was their thing. Columbus's thing was to shoot the motherfucker first, to rape his old lady, to kill his kids, and destroy all of them. And you've got to go, why did he do that? Yeah. Where is that coming from? That his native place is to go there and, and push for some kind of domination, I guess, control. Well, I'm, my theory is that goes way back to a kind of terror. Mm. The same terror or fear in the case of the infant, terror when the infant never grows up, but gets to be 30 years old yeah. and becomes a very, very dangerous homo sapien. I believe that when you go, you, you come to a new world, and you and you look at the possibilities of cotton and, and and tobacco and you go i need a workforce here so you go against certain nibblings at your conscience and you bring over a bunch of blacks from africa and you've got to operate on your own head because they don't want to be here and they don't want to do the work and you got to make them do that and you've got to use some very extreme measures. And those measures have to be dealt with in your head because you've also got God and the Bible and all that in there. And you've got to balance a whole lot of shit, okay? Mm -hmm. A whole lot of brutal stuff versus the word. And after 400 years of that, maybe what was an intellectual job that you had to do on yourself to hold those two contradictions have now become on the level or have entered into the level of genetics. Mm -hmm. Maybe, and I believe scientifically, there are people who will say, that repeated action over a long period of time now starts to become a part of the organism, not an activity of the organism. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm taking you on this trip mostly because I'm on this trip going, okay, if I want to take and use the power of the art and my art, uh, even though many of the arts can do the same thing, how do I want to address some of the problems or some of the difficulties that we're having on this planet today and really get to the core of that. And yes, I can talk about racism, but I now know, feel I know, that I'm dealing with something deeper than that. 
deeper than that. And how do I address that? Obviously, uh, one of the things I always say about Bob in my head, by the way, I talked to him the other day, he called me. Robert Irwin. I know how I was doing, yeah. But I think about Bob because he's in a really different place than me, but he's an archetype for me in the sense that he doesn't have to make sure that he's dragging his audience along with him. Uh, he can do what he does and, and, and mystify and, and um, uh, just, you know, shock and, and, and shock and all and the whole thing with his audience without having to bring them inch by inch, a philosophic point by philosophic point along with him. I have to go, okay, I'm talking about you, talking to you guys about some very particular shit. And this is some kind of deep shit that maybe everybody isn't talking about. So I can't give you a shortcut. I've got to take you to what I'm talking about and make sure you get there. So that I'm not just talking about, and I'm, right now I'm thinking about my next body of work. I'm not just talking about poverty. What's, what's under poverty? Well, there, is, there tends to be a feeling of dehumanization in the sense that I don't have to care about who you are, whether you can eat or not, whether your kids can eat or not. Poverty means, and let's, it might go to my greed. We talked about greed. You know, greed is that armor that protects a certain personality, and poverty is also kind of like... Um, you know, maybe unintended um, uh, results, maybe um, what do they call uh, casualties that are collateral damage? Collateral damage. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe is not only that, maybe I got my money and I like to have st stand on my pile of money and look at you and go, fuck you. Mm -hmm. You know, eat cake, let them eat cake, you know. But how do I say that visually? Right. How do I tell that story? That's what I'm wrestling with. Yeah. You've been involved with telling stories that are not, I mean, are kind of overlapping in this territory for decades and decades and decades. How do you see this as, I mean, do you see this as a, as a unique moment or is it a kind of one of those coming, things are coming back to the surface again? How do you yeah. see um, what happens is, I think myself as well as others uh, have gotten maybe even trapped in the veneer. Okay, I can talk about racism and, and I can give you images of that, but that doesn't tell, that doesn't, that doesn't talk about real racism because I've got to get to the roots of that. Well, when I go to the roots of racism, I end up being, well, why does that guy feel like that? Mm. And, and I have my information as well as my personal experiences have said um, that, yeah, he doesn't like me, but that's not, that's not really the whole story. In fact, that's just the surface story. It, number one, I understand that he doesn't like himself. Mm. Okay. And he has a terror of the other because he has a, really a terror of self. Can't go there. Can't deal with self. I have to be the puppet that wears the, 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 wears the guilt of racism because that psyche can't deal with it straight up in his own head. He's got to involve me. But I could be talking about sexism too. I don't know about you, uh, Matthew, but I know a lot of men who are absolutely terrified of women. They don't let themselves know that, mm. but they have an automatic uh, um, Adversary, adversarial relationship to women. Mm. Uh, I think it goes back in many cases to 
maybe power struggles of one kind or another. Um, um, and, and it makes me feel good, uh, makes me feel better and, and that I am executing something that should, that is supposed to happen when I knock the shit out of her. Mm, mm, mm. You know, I feel better. Mm, yeah. Well, how do you talk about something insidious like that? Yeah. Or at least, impl and maybe you can't talk about it straight up, Maybe you just imply certain things that maybe something inside them will uh, click. Right. Now, we're talking about shit that folks do not want to go to and do not want to deal with. Right. All right. They'll deal even with racism and they'll go, blah, blah, blah. Or you're, you, and that goes that way, blame the victim. Ah, you're going on a trip, you're tripping. And you're and you're accusing me of some stuff that I'm not. Okay. They'll do whatever. Do not talk and get into what are you really afraid of? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not afraid, I'm pissed off. Well, you're more than pissed off, you're enraged. Wow, that's pretty extreme. What's underneath that? Yeah. You're doing some deep probing. And we've only got a couple minutes left, but I was just going to ask you, is there, how so far has this started to work its way or started to percolate into the work you're doing now? Well, I'm like a film director now. I have to find the right actors mm. to, uh, to act out the story. And uh, obviously the actors will have to be um you know uh symbols for and i think in part we're talking class mm -hmm. but this terror that i'm talking about is not limited to one class it could be anybody mm -hmm. um i think it's predominantly white men mm -hmm. um, um, not only did columbus do what he did when he entered this uh this continent uh, some Europeans did the same thing in Australia yeah. over and over and over again in Africa, South America. Yeah. So uh, I think we're talking about something pretty big and trying to get the right characters to represent certain ideas and the clash of ideas and the contradictions of uh, uh, various points of view, I'm still working on. Mm. Uh, yeah. I had started some of this before my thinking had gotten even deeper. Um, I had, I, I was, I, I wanted to use um, Vogue and and Esquire models. Uh, that that um, that group of people that that um, they're kind of the the pinnacle of what you should look like, how you should carry yourself, all of that. Um, and I, I wanted a juxtaposition, a juxtapose that with um, poverty, hunger, mm. children, so forth. It's a little bit literal, mm. but I, I got to start someplace. Yeah, yeah. And literal sometimes is very necessary. Sometimes that's all you got. Ed, this has been great. We're running out of time, but I wanted to say thank you. Well, you got it, buddy. <laughs> and I want to go ahead and I'm going to sign off when you're ready. Okay. Any last words? <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk some more. All right. Bye, Ed. Bye.